Okay, this is E. Matthews Jet, and I'm back with two more of my race cars. Uh, one is a uh, new era, and the other one is a car that I pretty much manufactured myself. I manufactured the chassis, and I ordered different parts to put the car to put the car together. So I made my own car right here. I actually made a video of this car. It's on YouTube, but because I'm introducing the other car, so we're gonna talk a little bit about this car. Okay. This is a 1A scale, new era, a kit. The car comes completely dismantled, and you gotta put it together. Let me remove the clips for you to get into the car. As you see, the car has my paint schemes. Because all my race cars have the same paint job. Okay, so this is uh, Pro Modified drag car. You see this old sticker here? It's called JC Hobbies. This is the guy I got the car from. His name is Carlos. Carlos and I, we became very good friends for many years, and he's pretty much like my brother. I love the guy. So I'm going to re remove it, the body. There it is. Okay. This is a Rossi 21. It's a motor that came stock, but I removed the piston sleeve and I ported the sleeve. So right now the sleeve is built for high compression. So the car holds ass. This car had a two-speed right here, and I removed the two-speed to put it in a dragster uh, that you're going to see on uh, my other video. So I never put another two-speed. So it's running pretty much stock with a, a ported motor that creates a lot of power. The car runs real fast, but it won't shift. So after a certain uh, speed, the car is asking for second gear, and it's not going to shift into second gear. The chassis is made out of chromoly tubing from New Era. They did a good job. I don't want to drop this, but... Let me turn it. Whoop, let me turn it around. I got two cars on this, and if I take the car off the board, it's gonna knock the other car down. This mode is awesome, and the car is awesome. It's a good running car. Like three months ago, I removed the receiver because these are cars that were running FM and I'm going to convert them all to 2.4. So I started yanking out receivers and the old radios, I pretty much threw them out because I have to upgrade remotes. This pipe here was put out by Afner. It's a two-piece pipe. And it works real good. You can't get those pipes anymore. They're real nice. And the aluminum plates that you see in the car, I made all of that. Those are my own uh, plates that I made. 
So I made the side panels. And this is my fuel refiller on this car. Instead of uh, opening this up, I got a thing. I just stick it there. Turn on an electric pump. And it fills up the tank immediately. So this is an awesome uh, car. And it's pretty fast even though it doesn't have the tool speed because I took it out. Uh, soon I'm going to do research and find a tool speed. Either Serpent or Mugen tool speed. And I'm going to order it and put it back on the car. And make it shift from first to second gear. Because these cars they shift from first to second gear. To do a pass. And a tractor that is 132 feet in length. So it's an awesome running car. So this is New Era. And New Era don't make these cars anymore. Plus New Era went out of business. Actually I used to know them. I was very good friends with them. And the husband died. When the husband died. The wife uh, instead of. Her putting her kids to run the business, what they did is they shut it down. They shut down the whole company. So they shut it down to the point that nobody could get these cars anymore. And that was a bad move because I think they should have continued doing it. Actually, the son tried to make it work, but the son didn't think like the dad did. So the son didn't do a, a damn thing. And the company actually went away. But the dad was making awesome cars. And he's a, he was a real nice guy back then also. I used, to see them at, I used to see him at the shows. I would go to the shows and talk to them. You know, very nice people, man. It's sad that they're not doing these cars anymore. And I got extra tires and parts for this. Okay, this car right here is manufactured by me. What I did is I made the chassis and I ordered parts from everywhere and the body and I actually made my own car. Because I didn't want to build a kit or buy somebody else's car and put it together. I actually wanted to do my own car. But when you do your own car... And, you know, you need to have uh, either your own top-of-the-line machine shop. But back then I didn't, and today I do. But back then what I was doing was ordering parts from, you know, pretty much all over the place. I was getting parts from every company until I put this car together. Let me remove this body. Okay, uh... I have a video where I explain the history of the paint job, but I'm going to bring it up again. Uh, I lived in Puerto Rico in the early 70s. Uh, my parents decided to move over there because my sister was born sick. And because she was born sick, we needed to live in a hot climate for her to survive. So the doctors told my parents that we would have to, like, to move to Florida. But because... Uh, my mom and my stepdad, they're from Puerto Rico, so decided to move to Puerto Rico. And I went with them. I had no choice. So when I lived in Puerto Rico, uh, my dad's uh, brother-in-law that I consider my uncle, he owned a mechanic shop that I actually grew up in the mechanic shop. I became a mechanic because of him. And uh, we would go on Sundays, Saturdays and Sundays, to a racetrack. And at the track, they had a car, a 69 Corvette Stingray, like this car right here, running at the track with this paint job. I fell in love with the car so much that I decided to paint all my cars. So any RC car I have has this paint job. And that's the story of this car. So this is a replica of the car that ran back in the 70s in Puerto Rico.
And the owner of the car, they used to call him Don Barry because he was very fat. Don Barry means like barrel. Come on, come off. This is a car that I built on my own. Not a kit. Didn't buy it out of a store. I made the chassis plates and I made the willy wheels. I made scale willy wheels. Let me turn the car upside down. I can't take a lot of weight off because I'm going to knock the other car off. That's my own chassis. You can't buy this car anywhere. This is my car. And not only did I make this car, but back in the 2000s, 2001s, 2002, 2003, 2004, 2005, I was making chassis for everybody in the New Jersey area that was into drag racing. So I was building cars for other people, making parts. I kept everybody running. And I was, uh, once upon a time, well respected in the RC drag car world. You know, today in 2019, none of these guys know me because I'm not into this anymore. I still drag race, but I drag race on my own with a couple of my friends, and we're not racing. We're not racing at the track the way we used to. But I still got friends that come to visit me from time to time that are still doing it. But I'm doing other stuff. I'm flying model airplanes. I play guitars. I like to go on nice motorcycle trips with my Harley. And from time to time, I shoot firearms. I go to the gun range. So this car is awesome, man. There was a guy many years ago that offered me, like, this guy went crazy with this car. He offered me so much money for the car, and I turned him down. He was offering me, like, I think it was, like, back then, I don't know, 15, 16, 1700 bucks for this car. And that was in, like, 2003, 2004. So the motors are now Rossi. This is the S3. It's a race motor. But I have another one. It's called the S5 Outlaw. And I have that in a touring car. completely handmade today I have a bandsaw back then I didn't back then I used to cut all the metal with a jigsaw back then when I was cutting these chassis this chassis was cut by hand with a jeweler's uh, hacksaw well you know So when I did this car, I didn't have like the band sores and stuff that people have today. Now I got a band sore. Now it's easier to cut aluminum. Back then I was cutting it by hand. I would draw out the plate and start cutting. I would spend the whole damn night cutting. Those willy, be willy wheels are all hand cut, not band saw cut. You can't get this car anywhere. So if today somebody offered me even two, three, four, five grand, six grand, ten thousand for this car, I wouldn't let it go. I don't give a crap if you got twenty grand in your pocket and you want this car. I don't need your money. Car's not for sale. So I had people offer me different cars. And stuff. They offered me every damn thing for this car. And I wouldn't part with it. 
And the card is right here. Still here. So back in the 2000s, this card was uh, actually uh, there was a company called uh, man, what's the name? Warburn. That they made these cars that ran like a plate like this. Uh, actually, this is the reason why I built the car because Warburn came out, and when Warburn started running, they started beating all these heavier cars. So I wanted to make a light car to beat Warburn. And this is actually the car that beat Warburn because I beat the crap out of Warburn with this car. There was guys showing up with Warburn and they couldn't even keep up with this car. So that's when everybody started offering me a lot of money for the car. Everybody back then wanted this car so bad. You know, every conversation we had is how much you want for the car, man. Because they wanted a car that could beat Warburn. So in Warburn, they don't make them anymore. But my friend Mark, that painted the body for my rail, he's got like two or three Warburn uh, cars that are running still today. They're old dinosaur cars, but those fucking cars run off so awesome. When Warburn came out, they fucking smoked the uh, New Era. Because New Era were running, you know, scale cars that are a little bit on the heavy side. And Warburn is just pe pretty much a piece of, uh, not even aluminum. They were running a graphite fucking chassis with four wheels on it and a motor. So they were hard to beat because the car was so damn light. That it was like a lightning down the track. But it was in a car. It's just a fucking board. You know? So I decided to build this car to go fuck with Warburn. And I did. Now I didn't fuck with them. I fucking smoked their ass. Okay? Warburn ain't got shit on me anymore. And there it is. That's the car. Look at those scale willy wheels in the back. Completely scale. You don't see that in RC cars today. You don't see none of this, man. Today's guys that are running fucking RC cars, they're running a piece of shit plate with four wheels and a monster motor, and they're running 50% nitro, cooking the motor down the track, and they're saying, oh, man, I'm running fast. I'm running fast. It's bullshit. So cars like this, you can't get anymore. You can't get these cars. These cars are treasures. They're the finest RC cars built that you can't find anymore. You're not going to find them anywhere. And I got friends that come here and they see my cars and they say, man, you got that? And then they come up, oh, you, do you have a Warburn? I tell them, who the fuck wants a Warburn? I don't want a Warburn. I don't need a fucking piece of shit graphite plate with four wheels on it on a, with a nitro motor. That's not a car. These are cars. That's it. So this is E. Matthews Jet. I'm going to sign out. I hope you enjoy the video. You know, give me good uh, ratings. And take care, my brothers. I, I wish I could meet some, some of you people out there. I know there's a lot of guys out there with a lot of talent. Building nice cars, planes, and trucks. I would love to meet you guys. But tonight... I'm about to go to sleep. Tomorrow I got to go back to work. My weekend is over.